We have seen the statistics for inflation and they're laughable. According to government numbers, inflation is extremely low. It's so low that it's actually a concern, apparently. Perhaps these people have corporate credit cards. Companies have been hiding inflation in a way that obviously people haven't really awakened to. And that's why you came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at what's happening with inflation, hidden inflation. We've talked about this subject before in the comment section in particular. This is something that I wanted to share, make an entire video about, and we will go into the depths today. So I wanted to first begin by talking about the different measurements we have of inflation. You can see that the Federal Reserve tends to use the core PCE. You have the CPI numbers. You have other alternate forms of inflation, how they calculated it previously. You could see the cost of living adjustments that people are getting for social security for instance depends on where you live it depends on your current situation inflation in my opinion is not one number okay it depends on so many factors if you for example live in the middle of nowhere and you're a single individual and you really don't buy anything and you live off the land and you don't have any property tax because you grow agriculture and you get your money back and maybe there are a whole bunch of different rules and things that apply to you but don't apply to somebody else, well then, your rate of inflation is going to be significantly different from somebody who lives in, for example, New York City, they have four kids, they work a particular job, and they drive you know, expensive cars, and, and so on, okay? There are all different levels of inflation. It depends on where you live and all the factors. But we can look at the numbers that we are getting out of the so-called legitimate source Sources. For example, this is out of the Fed, but it's showing you the CPI numbers for 2018, apparently 2.2%, okay? You've heard that number of 2%. It comes up very often. Maybe you want to look at the Federal Reserve's favorite core PCE numbers, and that's approximately 1.9%. We'll see if it might move down actually to 1.8%. Who knows? We're looking at around that 2% mark. This isn't really that accurate as far as I'm concerned for the majority of people in what they spend on a daily basis, weekly, monthly, and so on. Then you can look at the alternative choices where we have, for example, from shadowstats.com. I know you've seen this before. We've always talked about this. Brand new numbers, of course, all the time they're being updated as of March 2019. What we have here is the red line on both of these charts showing you the CPI. Okay, so that brings us around 2% or so. Then you have the SGS alternate on the top here we're looking at. That's based on 1990s way of calculating. If you look at the bottom, that's based on the way they calculated it in 1980. This is not his own calculation that he's come up with. He's using their methodology for figuring out the inflation rate just based on the way they used to do it 30 years ago, based on the way they used to do it 40 years ago. This is how they did it and now he's just recalculating it. That's all. That tells us that the inflation rate right now depending on which one you're going to use, is maybe 5% or perhaps 9 to 10%. So this gives us an idea of maybe there are other things out there that are not being accounted for in the normal CPI numbers that you see or even the core PCE. I find it very laughable that they have always considered food and energy to be volatile and therefore should not be put into the calculations of your cost of living. Well that doesn't really represent the truth then because you have to be eating every day and so why wouldn't that be part of it? Well it's volatile. Well they have to figure out a way to include it and maybe spread it out a bit, figure out a way to flatten that, that volatility but just excluding it? Well, that's manipulation as far as you ask me. Or for example, the way that they can calculate this, what they do is they, you have a steak, a person eats a steak, maybe it was a top sirloin or something, and then they no longer can afford to eat that. So they go for ground beef. And if the ground beef is too expensive, then they're going to go for hot dogs. And if they can't afford the hot dogs, then they're going to go for some other processed meat or something. And it just goes down and down. But that isn't a cost of living, you know, showing your expenses 
is there. What we're looking at is actually somebody changing the way they live. This is not a way to calculate this. Unfortunately, they've manipulated it entirely and they make it seem this way because an average person doesn't really know what's going on. They're just going to work. They're doing their thing. They're trying to pay their bills. They're making ends meet. They've got family issues. They've got health issues. They've got other problems to worry about. They're not going to sit here and recalculate inflation based on how it is back in 1990 and 1980. They don't care. They don't know. They're watching television. They're zombified. And this is what happens. Okay. But you as an individual, you're watching this. You are actually interested in the information. You're wondering why the hell is this like this? Why do we see this today? Well, look, the best way to calculate inflation, there's no way around it. Okay. You take a product that has been in existence for a long period of time and just figure out what did it cost 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30, 40 years ago back, not just one number. You can't just pick one point in time because there's a whole bunch of different things that could have occurred around that time, which had, you know, an impact on that price. So what I like to do is just go back, find the historic prices of different items and then measure it how it was back then. In this case here, I just uh, brought up the year 2000 just because it's a round number and the newest numbers on this site in particular were 2014. In this example, I found it interesting actually that lettuce, iceberg lettuce, 59 cents per head back in the year 2000. This is American dollars, of course. If I forward over here to 2014, I could find the same thing for 229 per head. Now, I don't know how accurate that is. You know, it depends. There's a lot of numbers here that might not make sense to a lot of people based on where you live. This is not the best thing to do, but you have to do this for yourself, okay? Where you live and not take a national average and at the same store, perhaps, that you've been shopping at for 30 years. That's the best way to calculate it, okay? And there are different things that I think that there's, um, you know, really skews the numbers. For example, if you look at milk, Milk is not a good one to pick simply because this is a subsidized industry and it is always being manipulated because of the government's involvement in it, okay? So you want to use something that there is no involvement and also you don't want to use something like I looked in this list, I thought it was funny back in the year 2000, they're talking about computers and the technology that they were mentioning there was something that is just really old considering now. You can't compare two things like that together. It has to be the item which is basically the exact same thing over that period of time. Anyway, long story short, obviously, I wanted to get to this. I think it is really important to look at this type of information because it's not really visible to the majority. This is all about what they call shrinkflation, okay? You might have heard of this before. I'll, I'll run through it as quick as I possibly can. There's a few articles that I want to talk about. Crandall writes in to say that many products have been downsized in recent years. Coffee, ice cream, etc. Almost all always it's the same price for less product. You've probably noticed this yourself. The package, maybe the package is the same size, but when you actually open it up, it's 90% air and you get a little bit of food at the bottom of it. It's no secret that some toilet paper manufacturers have been sneaking bigger cardboard tubes into their rolls. Check that out. Now, Crandall says it appears that the size of individual sheets is shrinking. So they're screwing people over in two ways. They're seeing that the cardboard inside of the tube there is actually getting larger and at the same time the individual sheets are shrinking. Then they go into the details and actually measure it and find that it used to be a square four and a half by four and a half. Now it's no longer a square. They're confirming this individual four inches on one side. So they're getting that half an inch and a 26% reduction in surface area. Now this might sound silly but if you think about it this is happening to a lot of different products not just TP. The truth is that it's an extremely important product. You can't get around it, you can't deny it. It's something that everybody's using. It's a great actual indicator as far as I'm concerned. So then it goes on to other ones as well. I found a bunch of different sites here out of the Wall Street Journal. They're pointing out this. Kimberly Clark's new Kleenex is advertised as 15% bulkier, but there's also 15% fewer sheets in that box than before things got all bulky. 
In this example here, they actually refer to it as grocery shrink ray, which I think is funny. And they talk about some further details here, essentially trying to make it seem as though they're providing a better product when actually they're giving people less. That's what it comes down to. I won't bore you with more of those details. Then you look at this out of consumer reports, the toilet papers that top consumer reports tested. You look through all of this. Essentially, they're all doing this for the most part, they're giving less less product and the prices are the same or have gone up. Now that's the way that you can go to the store. You might say, look, that has been the exact same price for the past 10 years. There is no inflation in this particular product. But if you look at it, chances are the actual amount inside has been reduced. All different types of products. I was looking here, they were showing in one of these articles, just going through all the different things that you previously saw. It was nine ounces. Now it's eight and a half ounces or 8.8 .8 ounces, whatever it was, people don't really notice, particularly if the container is the same size. They did a study here in this one. The professors found that consumers are far less, far more tolerant of package downsizing, wherein the ice cream company shrinks the container size but maintains current prices. Then they are of outright price increases, wherein they have to pay more for the same amount. Basically, they're better off reducing the amount of food or whatever it is of that product than actually increasing their price, okay? They're gonna do a lot better with their sales and that's just the way it is. That's how people have been able to be swindled by the corporations and essentially how we can look out there and suggest it's a 2% inflation when really it's much worse. You gotta look deeper into the details, the shrinkflation, the shrink ray, whatever you wanna call it. I thought this was interesting because it's something that we've talked about before. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to support this channel, you got to hit that like button. I really do appreciate that. You're getting the type of news that really you don't get anywhere else. And that's why I know that you're supporting me with everything that you've done. And I'm really, really thankful for it. So that's all. If you want the financial education you weren't taught in school, these two books have everything you need from the foundation history, the asset classes, making money, so much more. Check them out at the link. And if you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to find out about the 6,000 stores that are closing right now in the United States, already surpassing what we've seen last year in 2018, well, don't worry. I got it all covered. Check the video out and I will see you there.